go for it. Why, Carl, thank you for inviting me in today. I know when we, sp know when we spoke on the phone, uh, we mentioned that we have about 20, 25 minutes for this meeting today. Is that still the same case? Yeah. That's good. Uh, before we begin, I just want to ask if there's anything specific that you want me to touch on throughout this meeting. Uh, any concerns that you might have from the beginning? Uh, no, I'm not being personal. I'm just here to see what you have. I have yeah, nothing in particular. I mean, it's always nice to talk about retirement planning because that's something that's foremost in most of our minds. But I'm just open to listening to what you have to present. Okay. Great. Uh, so, naturally, you probably want to know a little bit about me, the company I work for, and the process that we use when working with our clients. So, Prudential been around for over 140 years. Uh, you know, everyone thinks Prudential, they think life insurance right away. But yes, we are one of the leaders in life insurance, but we are actually so much more. So we're actually currently a top 10 global asset manager in the entire world, coming in right below $1.4 trillion in assets under management. So we're up there with your Vanguard, your Black Rocks, and your Fidelities. So not only do we do the insurance side very well, but we also do the asset side and the investment side very well also. Uh, when you look down here, we actually have 23 of the largest 25 corporate plans and 19 of the largest 25 uh, public plan, largest public plans. So we do the insurance side very well, we do the investment side very well, but we also do the pension and benefit side very well also. Any questions on that? Yeah, that's interesting information. Right. I see all these other companies here. Yeah, that's uh, so we use you know PGM, the fixed income. These are the four basic ones that we use when we talk about uh, you know, the assets and the management. So the process that we use when working with our clients is that we like to establish financial goals by understanding your situation. So we like to ask some questions, find out what your wants, your needs, and your goals are. From there, we'll benefit from knowledgeable analysis, gather everything that you know I got together from what you tell me today, go back to the office where we use a team approach. From there, we'll, uh, we'll come up with a plan, uh, strategy specifically for you guys, and we'll come back and review and discuss the strategies. From there, if everything looks great, we want to move forward, we would implement the solutions and provide guidance. And the most important part would be reviewing your progress because as life goes on, your goals and you know, needs may change, so we can meet up quarterly, biannually, <coughs> annually, whatever we kind of decide. Uh, how does that sound? Interesting. Interesting? All right. Sounds fair. Sounds fair. All right. Okay. So when we talk about financial planning, we usually use these four cornerstones. So these four cornerstones are pretty much like uh, the financial, uh, like foundation to your house, pretty much. So without these four cornerstones and without the foundation to your house, uh, you know, the foundation might not stand. Uh, just, we just want to kind of make sure that you have all these in place. Uh, so obviously if you're open to it, uh, I want to spend the majority of our meeting kind of getting to know a little bit more about you and, you know, your financial situation. All right. So, when we talk about you know future con you know concerns, we like to talk about future concerns. Most people are uh, worried about retirement. So you know you have all these retirement uh, things in place. You have your retirement savings and everything like that. So you're kind of going up the mountain. But when you get to the top of the mountain, it's only halfway, and now you have to start heading down the mountain. So you retire, and we want to make sure that you have enough uh, money and funds to last you through retirement. Uh, next future concern many people have uh, is, is education. So with education uh, out, outpacing inflation, more and more people are turning to educational saving plans. Uh, the next concern we have is savings. So we like to say to have three to six months, it's like an emergency fund, uh, just to have those savings in case you get laid off or you know get hurt at work or anything breaks in the house like to you know, have some savings there where you don't have to tap into any retirement savings that you may have. The next future concern would be protection, where you know you have your life insurance. Uh, you know, if you know something happens and uh, you know a loved one uh, passes away, we like to have the protection in place where you can actually self-complete your plan, your 
financial plan. Uh, estate planning, that would be your wills, your trusts, your power of attorneys. Uh, I can help you out as much as I can with that. Uh, but we also work with lawyers to help complete that plan. Uh, the next future concern that people may have is cash flow. So we like to see what you have coming in versus what you have going out. And uh, you know we can always do a uh, no cost to you cash flow analysis where you know we can see where you stand at that spot. The last future concern that we have are taxes. So we have you know your 401k, your uh, you know the tax me now pretty much. So you have your 401k, you have your traditional IRAs. You have the tax me later, which could be your Roth IRAs uh, and annuities. Or you have the uh, tax me never, which could be your life insurance plans. Right. So when we talk about uh, these future concerns, uh, we really like to get to a whole ba a baseline. <clears throat> so typically, uh, you know, these meetings end in one in three ways. The way that I ask you questions and the way you answer, uh, you might have everything in place and there may not be any need for uh, improvement. You did everything very well. Uh, the way you know your questions, you ask me, uh, you might just find out that we're not a good fit and we're not going to work together. Or third, and most commonly, uh, the way you answer my questions, the way I answer yours, uh, you might find that there is room for improvement and that there is a baseline for us to work together. How does that sound? Good. Sounds good. Interesting to hear more. Yeah. All right.